Let's have some fun. I'm gonna ask ChatGPT a question about overactive bladder. This is happening live. I have not pre-recorded anything. I haven't already asked this question. I have no idea what it's gonna say. My goal here is to see how poignant, how direct, how comprehensive even is this information. And I'm going to comment based upon what comes out. So let's do it. Let's start recording the screen. All right, so I'm gonna be asking the question, what is the root cause of my overactive bladder? What's the root cause of my overactive bladder? Wouldn't you like to know, right? It's like, please tell me. So obviously ChatGPT isn't able to access your entire consciousness and physical body and medical history and everything like that. But let's take a look and see what, well, there we go. Thank you, AI. I'm not a doctor, but, um, it's uh, characterized by involuntary contraction of the bladder wall, leading to frequent urination, et cetera, of course. All right, so we get started here. Muscle or nerve dysfunction. Very interesting that it starts off there. And um, it would be good to know if ChatGPT would tell us, like, why do I have nerve dysfunction that's creating my overactive bladder? Maybe I'll ask it in a moment. I don't know. Aging. Um, the muscles and nerves can weaken reducing the ability to control. Okay, that's understandable. That is something that can happen later in life. Bladder irritation. Yep, UTIs, these sort of irritations from pathogenic um, infiltration can potentially create something like this. Neurological conditions that are related to essentially nervous system dysregulation. Uh, medications that also are creating a side effect, understandable. Excessive fluid intake. If you drink a ton of fluids, it will make you pee a bit more. That's right. Hormonal imbalances, lifestyle factors, obesity, constipation, lack of physical activity. Um, okay. Psychological factors. Thank you, ChatGPT, for putting that at number nine at the last of the list. But at least you put it there, right? Stress and anxiety can sometimes ex can sometimes exacerbate OAB symptoms. Maybe stress or anxiety can actually create. OAB, but that's what we'll get into here. So the answer is not, it's not a terrible answer. I mean, by all means, right? Always go to your doctor, get checked out because there could be some sort of structural issue and you wanna have a really good workup. But if you've done that, you've done those things. I typically have people who are at the end of their rope. They're like, I've been dealing with this for months or years and I finally found you and I found your work. What do we do now? And I'm so grateful that those people actually heal and overcome their issues through our approach. And that's why I do this work because it's absolutely incredible to see someone dealing with something for a very long time and then change who they are being and recognize that ultimately a, a pattern that they were in with their own emotions or thoughts or behaviors was creating tension, which then can create dysfunction, etc. One thing is really big. The first one is muscle or nerve dysfunction. So this is huge, right? And, and it's, it's true, it is, a, it is the root cause. But the answer, let's just ask ChatGPT. Let's ask it. Why do I have nerve dysfunction that is leading to overactive bladder? What is creating this nerve? I don't know, that's probably not, that's pretty well stated. Let's see actually what the, um, the answer is to that. I, I have my own perspective. So nerve dysfunction, aging, neurological conditions, nerve damage, infections, really not a whole lot is given to us here. This is the big gaping hole that I was expecting. Again, ChatGPT is doing the best they can to amalgamate information from the recent past or everything that has been produced and published to this point from the sources that they even you know grab from and then utilize but mind-body information about mind-body syndrome, tension myositis syndrome, psychophysiologic disorders, which are essentially all the same thing, are the mo best and clearest explanation for overactive bladder that I have ever seen in my own mind-body work and the clients that I work with. What I mean by that is this nerve dysfunction, your nervous system, the autonomic nervous system is governing the genitourinary system. It's governing all of these responses, the muscular movement, the need, the feeling to urinate, the urination itself. 
you're not consciously doing that. You're not consciously like, yeah, in 30 minutes, I'm gonna feel the urge to pee. And no, that's the autonomic nervous system is doing that. So how do you get into the autonomic nervous system and shift it? That's the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is there completely in bed with the body. The body and the subconscious mind are ultimately one. Now, if you can remove the bridge and the barrier from the conscious mind to the subconscious mind, that's amazing. And then you can actually give it new instructions and see a change. That's rewiring your nervous system. That's rewiring neural pathways. So the nervous dis system dysfunction though is coming from um, we have repressed emotions that can sensitize the nervous system over time. There's this stuck energy. Imagine this anger or this resentment or this shame or this pressure or this lack of self-esteem, this pressure on yourself, this criticism, this judgment, these emotions that aren't being fully expressed and passed through, they're being stuck in one place. That actually can lead to nervous system dysfunction in your brain and your body that creates a physiological symptom so when your brain is receiving danger signals that now is not okay, which it can do whenever it's having all these emotions, which it can do whenever you're constantly checking your email or you are worrying about something tomorrow or that's happening later today, that's anxiety. When you have these tendencies or perfectionism or being hyper-responsible or fear of confrontation, you know, there are certain personality traits that also can lead to what then creates nervous system dysfunction. And then you might have something like urinary frequency. So some people have pain, some people have genitourinary dysfunction, some people have GI dysfunction, such as irritable bowel syndrome. There are a lot of ways in which mind-body syndrome can manifest. Um, but I just wanted to point that out. That is a huge gaping hole that is, there's medical literature around it. I definitely look into Dr. Howard Schubiner's work and many others in this field there are research studies. There's a lot of neuroscience backing this up that is currently not being um, really presented in the mainstream medical model, which ChatGPT seems to be um, you know, pr proliferating or let's say continuing at least. So that's my perspective on it. There's some reasonably useful information here, but it doesn't go into the deepest depths of why you even have that nervous system dysfunction, which you definitely need to be discovering because that's the root cause. So if you need some help on this, I actually created a discover my root cause tool. It's literally what it's for. It helps you to discover and look within yourself what could be causing this because it's your blind spot. If it's in the subconscious, you can't see it from the, from the conscious mind. So we have this breathwork practice. There's a master class with some information. There is a discovery tool, it's completely free. So check out the, the discovery tool and let me know how it works for you. And I'll talk to you later on. I'll see you next time.